So there's some pretty big Chapman Guitars news, and I have to cover it because, I mean, come on, it's me. But, but in all seriousness though, they've revamped their entire brand. And I think it is an interesting topic to cover because it reflects not just Chapman particularly, but kind of the guitar industry in general. They're making some big changes. We're talking name changes, factory changes, entire lineup changes, distribution changes, and I think this reflects on the overall industry, so I thought we'd talk about it. Some of the changes I think could be good for Chapman, and others I'm not so sure. Speaking of one of those things that I'm not too sure about, is they've announced that they're doing name changes, they're changing the names of their models. Now Chapman Guitars have been around, I think the concept uh, anyway, it's around 15 years at this point, at least that's from memory. The first guitar that they came out with was the ML1. It was a strat shaped guitar and then when they added to the line there was the ML2. The second guitar was a Les Paul shaped guitar. Then the third guitar, the ML3, was a Tele shaped guitar. So you've got the three main and all you have to really remember there is one, two, three. Uh, but they've announced that they're going to change that and that's been around for 15 years. I'm surprised that they want to change it now and I can understand the reasoning and the concept behind it. A lot of people don't like the couple letters and numbers like Ibanez, the RG74321QM. It's like a barcode numbering system and it, it's not particularly catchy and I get that but in the case of Chapman it wasn't really a barcode, it was ML1, ML2, ML3, Strat, Les Paul, Tele. There was no real difficulty in kind of remembering what we were talking about. But they've announced that they're changing it, and I've written to the names, they wanted them to be words and names, uh, I've written them down here. Uh, the ML1 will be now called the Sundown, the ML2 will be called the Herald, and the ML3 will be called the Lawmaker. Additionally, they've also added some new shapes to the lineup, like uh, an original shape called the Guardian. Now, like I said, the Chapman ML1 name has been going for 15 years, if, if not close to 15 years. That's a long time, especially for a brand that is primarily based online. We're talking about a lot of videos, a lot of search engine stuff, to when it's now the sundown, there's there's nothing really going to show up there on the search engine. That, that's a factor to, to consider. But another thing that I noticed that maybe they uh, they didn't is that we're looking at the new names and they're all they have a theme of of pilot call signals. I, I think it's just kind of because it's cool. Uh, but I noticed that some of the guitars, like at least two, are also newspaper names: the Guardian, the Herald. I mean, I'm half expecting a new guitar to be called the Telegraph, the Sun down. Uh, it, it, it's it's kind of funny. <laughs> I'm not sure they noticed that. But yes, they've decided to change the names and it's a decision that might pay off for them, but I'm not so sure. 15 years with one name is a long time. Now another interesting change, and one that I do think might pay off for Chapman, and it's an industry first as far as I'm aware, is that they've moved their entire production to India. Now, in most cases, guitars are built in either China, uh, Indonesia, Korea, Japan, the US. Uh, that, that's mainly where guitars are built, at least in bulk. Uh, but I've noticed a couple of brands in the last few years start to dip their toe into getting manufactured in India. Some BC Riches, some Jacksons, but they've always been on the lower end of the price point. Uh, but Chapman have seemingly done the opposite. They've gone full in, head first, got all of their guitars made in India. And if we look back at history, you know, people try and conflate the country of origin where a guitar is built and the quality. It's not the case, you can get a great guitar built anywhere. But uh, guitar factories are always changing. It used to be, you know, Japan as a substitute to the US, then it was Korea as a substitute to Japan, then Indonesia as a substitute to Korea and the prices eventually raise up enough to where a new country is found. And in this case, it's India, and Chapman have done a first here. They're getting their whole line built there, and I think this could be beneficial for them. Now, with that, there is a caveat, a big difference that I noticed and, and was quite surprised by. See, Chapman throughout their history have normally had the whole range covered. Well, they started out in the budget line of guitars. The original ML1 was £199. But that was 15 years ago, the world has changed and prices certainly have. We're not going to see a guitar in that range again, it, it, at least not from 
a brand that has got more name recognizability as as opposed to 15 years ago. But in recent years, Chapman has expanded to kind of having the full range of guitars to a degree. They had a lower end, lower range, cheaper, more affordable line of guitars. And then they had their more pro range of guitars. Uh, they were a little bit more expensive. They were over a grand each, uh, but they were the pro range. And then they even tried to expand to the custom shop UK hand-built ones. Uh, we covered that. I, I was not expecting that to be successful because it is an incredibly competitive market in that pricing uh, category and and it didn't seem to be uh, I noticed that they were blowing out those guitars that I think were originally retailing for around four grand for uh, for two grand so a big big price difference there and they've announced that they're cutting back that line of guitars which is understandable I, I think they bit off too much trying to get into that line of super high-end premium priced guitars but they've also announced that they're getting rid of the budget line. That bit surprised me. That's kind of their roots, and, and that's gone. Now, they haven't announced the prices for what these new Indian-made premium line of guitars are going to be, but I think a safe bet would be a grand plus. Uh, so kind of leaving behind the roots, leaving behind the more budget line of guitars, I think it might be a bit of a gamble. But in saying that, they could always introduce a cheaper line in the future, but now announcing that they've just got the pro line of guitars uh i don't know could be a bit of a gamble that's that's what i think there but it might pay off for them now finally and and i think it's probably the most interesting point as far as the guitar industry goes is that they've announced that they've changed their distribution model now normally the distribution of guitars is done one of two ways it's the traditional classic way of the guitars go from the factory to a distributor somewhere in normally the continent that you're you're supplying so there'd be a u.s distributor there'd be a, a distribution in the european union and normally it would go from the factory to that distributor to the dealers and then for, to the from the dealers to the customer that's your traditional classic way of guitar supply now in more recent years it's been to go direct to customer straight from the brand to the customer. You're cutting down on two sections. You're cutting down with the middleman in being the distribution, and you're also cutting down on the retail supply. So there's maybe a bigger slice of the pie for the brand to have, and that allows one thing that's quite important, price cuts. Take Vola guitars, for example. Just last year, they decided to go direct, and they lowered their prices at a time when everyone else was raising them. It made it a lot more competitive. Now the negatives to this is, you know, you can't play the guitars in a store. And, and that is a big thing for a lot of people. So that's the negative there. But, you know, there's pros and cons to everything. Now Chapman, their initial distribution was a little bit unorthodox. It was kind of a mix of both. Chapman had dealers, but they went direct to the dealers. So a dealer would place an order with Chapman and they'd ship them from the factory to the dealer, dealer to customer. Now the negative of this is that you're losing out on the distributor, which is another QC step. And uh, there's other negatives, but there's, there's the positives are that there is a saving and that can be passed on to the customer. And, uh, but they've, they've left that behind. They were, as far as I know, the only company doing that, and it seemed to work well for them for the last 15 or so years. But now they've announced that, surprisingly, I was expecting them to go direct, but no, they've gone the alternative route. They've gone with official distributors. And I actually think this might be beneficial for them, especially starting with a new factory, who knows what the QC is gonna be like, and that extra step with a good distributor is something that will matter. But it will be interesting to see how this benefits them. Going to the traditional route, seeing them in store, as opposed to seeing them maybe less in stores or, or seeing them not in any stores in the direct manner. It'll be interesting to see how it benefits them. So yeah, I just thought it was interesting industry news and I wanted to cover it. Apologies for any of the external noise. I'm not in my usual spot. I'm in, uh, I'm in California at the moment and it is very warm. Uh, so I'm gonna wrap this video up right now and go inside to some nice air conditioning. Thank you for watching. And if you like the video, like the video. Let me know what you think, some of the benefits, some of the negatives of these, uh, these changes. And uh, subscribe if you want to see more videos. All right. Thank you. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.